G'day, my name's Nikki Parat. I'm a bassist and also a vocalist. Today I'd like to talk to you about the fundamentals of jazz bass playing, about two five ones in major and minor keys, and also about playing the blues and rhythm changes and things that will make you a very good bass player in jazz. So let's start with the two five ones. Now, what are two five ones? They are essential to bass playing, to all jazz playing, and they're built from the major scale. So if you know your major scale, say C major scale, the second chord note is D, the fifth is G, and the tonic is of course C. So we have a two five one, Okay, so the two chord is a D minor seven. So I'm gonna play for you a D minor seven. I'm gonna play for you a G seven, that's the five. And now the tonic, the C major chord. One more time, D minor seven, G seven, and C major. That's your 251 in the key of C. But how do we apply that to jazz? How do we walk bass lines over a 251? I'm just going to give you some examples of some basic 251 walking bass lines. Here's our tempo. Okay, that was a very basic 2-5-1. If I wanted to make it more creative, I could maybe play more thirds instead of the root all the time, and that makes it a little more interesting to listen to and still outline the chords. We definitely want to make sure we're always outlining the chords of the tune. Okay, so that's walking the bass over two five ones in the key of C. What about minor two five ones? Okay, so let's do a two five one in the key of C minor. Okay, the two chord again, D minor seven. G seven. C minor. Don't forget to flatten the third if we want to make it a minor chord. So let's do some examples of walking the bass over two, five, one in C, but C minor this time. A little faster. Two, a one, two, three. So you definitely want to be able to make sure you hear that minor third if you're in a minor key and you're walking the bass. Very important. Okay, I'd like to also talk to you about the blues. I'm sure some of you have played the blues, you've definitely heard the blues, I'm sure. If you don't know the format for a 12 bar blues, you can find it online, you can write it out, and then you can learn it from memory. Because if you know the 12 bar blues pattern from memory, then you can be really creative with it, especially with your walking bass lines, okay? So let's take a 12 bar blues in the key of F. So that's your F blues, a couple of choruses. Now, how am I creating walking bass lines around that? Basically, it's a combination of chromatic. Say if I want to go from F7 to B flat seven, I could do it chromatically. 
or I could do it like an arpeggio. Okay? Or I can use a scale. There's a million ways to do it, but your ears will tell you what sounds good. And also who you're playing with, what the drummer's doing, what the, what the piano player or guitar is doing, or the horn player is doing, might actually inform what kind of chords or what approach you take to play the blues. You can be creative, but also pay attention to the chords and make sure you're outlining the chords as best as you can. So why is it important to be able to walk the bass over 251 chords? It's because they exist in most uh, American jazz songs. For instance, There's two fives. That's just one example of many, many thousands of songs that incorporate two five ones. So that's a good way to start practicing jazz on the bass. Know your two five ones, know the notes that are in those chords, and then just practice different two five ones, walking the bass over them. And then also the blues. The blues is really the fundamental of jazz. Most jazz comes from the blues, so keep the blues in your playing. You can't lose if you play the blues, so just keep playing the blues in any key, as many keys as possible, and you'll be well on the way to good bass playing. Thank you.